Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to introduce you guys to this concept called Max Payne. Maybe you guys have heard of it before, but it's basically taking a look at options and their open interest. So if you take a look at an options chain, you'll usually find a strike that has the highest open interest. And this theory is basically saying that that strike will be left out of the money by expiration date, causing Max Payne for that option holder or option holders. So I thought this theory was kind of interesting. So I went ahead and created a script to try and kind of see if I noticed any patterns with open interest and options chains at expiration. So I'll go ahead and show you guys what I came up with. So if we go to our R script, I'm going to require these packages and I'm also calling in options data from TD Ameritrade. So I dug through my files. I subset the data I pulled from TD Ameritrade. I read them in, I row binded all the options chains. Here I set the ticker equal to Amazon because I will be going over Amazon options. I subset all the options to include only Amazon options and also options that expired that very same day by setting days to expiration equal to zero. I didn't need all the columns. So if you're using your own data, you just need a couple of columns such as whether it's a put or a call, we will be needing open interest, the strike price and the expiration date. Here I'm just setting the expiration date column as a character vector. So if we take a look at our options, and I have only begun downloading these options chains very recently, so I don't have that much data. But for this example, I have enough data to go over three expiration dates, so that's what I'll be showing you. So here I'll store the closing prices. Now for some of these, I noticed that it wasn't the actual closing price, but I'm using the data that I downloaded from TD Ameritrade. So it might be off a few cents. So I'll do closes is equal to unique option stock close. So go ahead and run that. So if we go to our console, so I'll be going over three different expiration dates. The first one is July 24th of 2020. And this is the closing price I got from TD Ameritrade. The second expiration is July 31st and it's closing price for that Friday. And lastly, August 7th, 2020. And this was the closing price I got from TD Ameritrade. I will then manually set the expiration date to 2020-07-24. So that's the first expiration date in my data set. So I'll go ahead and run that. I will then subset my data to include only that expiration date by using subset option two. Expiration date equal to expiration. So go ahead and run that. I'm gonna separate the calls and the puts. So I'll do subset DF DF put to call is equal to calls. Copy that and do the same thing for the puts. So I'll go ahead and run these two lines. So both of these data frames are in ascending order, meaning the very first element is the lowest strike. And I want to take the cumulative sum of the open interest. So I have to rearrange the puts in descending order because buyers of puts are actually betting against higher prices. So that's why I'm putting this data frame in descending order. So to do that, I'm just going to do puts. I'll do order puts strike price. I'll set this decreasing as true. So I'll go ahead and run that. We'll take a look at calls and puts. So we see that the strike price for the calls is actually increasing. And for the puts, it's actually decreasing. So I'm going to take the cumulative sum of the open interest for both the calls and the puts by running calls, open interest. I'll assign that to come sum calls, open interest. I'll copy that and I'll do the same thing for the puts. So I'll run these two lines. I'll then row bind these two back together. And I'll go over why I actually took the cumulative sum of both of these when we actually graph it. 
So I'm going to insert a variable called in the money or ITM, and I'm going to set this equal to closes. This will be for the first expiration. I also want to extract the minimum strike. So I'll do min DF strike price. And I'll do that for the max strike price as well. I'm going to separate the strikes when we graph these by 100. So I'll go ahead and run these lines. So I'm going to be shading the regions where the options will be out of the money. To do that, I need to create a data frame with X and Y limits. So I'll do this by doing rect2. And I'll do a data frame. So X min will be ITM and infinity. X max is going to be C infinity to ITM. Y min will be negative infinity. Y max will set that equal to infinity. And I'll set my facet equal to put call by typing in call and put. So to graph it, I'm just going to use ggplot. I'm going to type in geom rect and I'm going to assign data equal to rect2. For a aesthetics, I'm going to assign x min equal to x min, x max equal to x max, y min will be y min, y max will be equal to y max. I'm going to assign fill to c call and put because I will be essentially extracting from this data frame. I'm then going to shade the region by using red and I'll set alpha equal to 20. All right, so now I'm going to be using geom area. Data will be df. My aesthetics will be x equals strike price. Y equals open interest. And I'm going to fill by using put call. I'll then add a theme by setting axis text x equal to element text. I'll use size equals 7, angle equals 90. For the height, I'm going to adjust by 0 0.95. And vertically, I'll use 0 0.2. So it's just the formatting of my x-axis labels. And for labels, I'll set x equal to strike price, y equals open interest, and title, I'll pass in the expiration date. I'm going to add a vertical line on the x-intercept, making it equal to where the stock actually closed that Friday. I'll use a black color and make that line type equal to dashed. I'll set the scale for the x axis by adding breaks equal to the sequence of our min strike to our max strike separated by 100 which was our buy variable. And then finally, I'm just going to do facet wrap by using put call. So now I'm going to run this block of code, but I'm looking at my notes and this should be data frame and this should be a C instead of an X. All right, so now I'm going to run this block. We'll take a look at the chart.
All right, so this is for July 24th, 2020 expiration. The black line indicates where the stock actually closed. And if we take the cumulative sum of the open interest, I'm interested in the increases rather than the actual number itself. So we see that around where the stock closed, we see huge jumps, which kind of indicates a large number of options in this area. And the shaded regions are the regions where the options are out of the money. You see that the majority of the options were actually worthless at expiration, assuming that these are all buyers. This doesn't mean that all 80,000 call options were left as worthless. If you want to take a look at the actual number of options for each strike, we can just run DF and then skip the cumulative sum and aggregating. And if we plot that, we essentially get the same output in regards to options being worthless, but it's just that it kind of looks more choppy and you can hardly notice how many options are there for each strike. So that's why I use the cumulative sum because I want to see the jumps. So we'll set that back to how it was. So here I'm going to calculate the number of call and put options out of the money at expiration. So I'll do that by running df subsetting my main data frame with all the options to only include the expiration date that we want, which was July 24th. So all my calls will be subset df df put call is equal to call. I'll do the same thing for the puts. I'm going to calculate the total number of calls by summing C open interest. I'll do the same for the puts. And then I'm going to calculate the total number of out of the money calls at expiration by subsetting DF, DF put call is equal to call and DF strike price is greater than close one. That'll be for the calls for the puts going to change this to put this will be less than and then I'm going to sum the open interest by doing OTMC open interest I'll do the same thing for the puts so these should be closes I'll go ahead and run this block now I'm going to display the total number of call and put open interest, the number of calls in the money, and the number of calls out of the money as a percentage. So here I'm going to paste some information on how to actually display that. So again, the total number of calls and puts. To get the total number of calls in the money, I'm just going to subtract the total number of calls minus the out of the money calls, the amount of options out of the money is just OTMC and then I'm going to round OTMC divided by the total number of calls by two decimal places. So I'm going to run these two lines. And if we go to our console, we see that for this particular expiration, our total amount of open interest for the calls was 85,000 call options. The number of calls in the money was approximately 13,600. And the majority were left out of the money, which was an approximate 84% of the total amount of open interest. Similarly, for the puts, we had a total of 58,000. Approximately 16,000 were in the money at expiration, leaving 42,900 out of the money, which was 73% of the total put open interest. So I'll do the following expiration. And change these closes to two. I'm going to set this to two. 
my expiration will be July 31st. So if I run this block down to the chart, we'll take a look at the plot. And similarly, we kind of see the same results where we see the majority of the options kind of expiring out of the money. So we'll get the percentages by running the subsequent code. If we go to our console, we see that for this expiration, only 66% were left out of the money and a total of 96% of the puts were left out of the money. So again, the majority of the puts and calls get left out of the money, which kind of parallels with the max pain theory of options expiring worthless. So again, we'll run the last expiration, which was 8.7. I'm going to change closes to 3. And here I'm just going to change these to in the money so I don't have to keep rewriting them. All right, so I'm going to run this block down to the chart again. So we'll take a look at the chart. So at option expiration, again, we kind of get the same results. The majority of the options are worthless at expiration. We'll get the percentages. So if we go to our console, we see that for this expiration, the percentage of options out of the money was 82% for the call options versus 80% for the put options. All right, so I'm going to choose a different ticker. I'm going to run Google. I'm going to run the code down to the chart again. Let's take a look at the plot. So these are Google options, and again, we kind of see the same results. Let's take a look at the percentages. For the call open interest, we see that 78% actually expired worthless versus 89% for the puts. So again, max pain is just the theory. I would just keep on looking at these percentages through time to see if the percentages change. And if they don't and they keep constant, then I will look forward to actually selling options since the majority of them will actually expire worthless. So again, just an idea I thought I'd share with you guys. I hope this video was useful. I know that getting options change data for TD Ameritrade is not feasible for many. I will try and look at another way to get options data. And if I do, I'll go ahead and share a video with you guys on how to scrape this data so you guys could do the same thing we did in the script and keep track of these percentages. Well, all right, guys, this was it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll start leaving my email address in the description box if you want to ask me any questions. And until next time, guys.